It is now October, which means one thing, fall is here. And what does fall bring? It's supposed to bring cooler temperatures, but we haven't really seen that yet across the United States. But of course, one of the big things about October is Halloween. It's time to get spooky and scary and put out your decorations for Halloween. And one thing that Halloween always brings about are horror things. People like to watch horror movies and of course play horror games. And I thought to myself, I don't think anyone on YouTube has ever done like a video talking about horror games around Halloween. So that would be really innovative and unique, right? Right? But no, really, I like to play a lot of horror games. It's a genre that I really enjoy. So I thought to myself, it would be fun if I talked about some of my favorite horror games of all times. Games that you should definitely be checking out if you're a fan of the horror genre or you just like to be scared sometimes. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's get into some must-play horror games. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! The first game I want to talk about is a game on the Sega Saturn called Enemy Zero. Now this game was a really impactful game when I was younger because it was just so unique and so interesting. Enemy Zero basically takes place on a spaceship and you wake up from a cryogenic sleep and find out that something is completely wrong. A lot of your shipmates are dead or are dying and being chased by something. So it's sort of a tale of two games. Basically when you're in little pods and stuff, it's a point and click style adventure. This sort of takes place within the D universe. Now D is a series that we have talked about on the channel before. The first D was a point and click game. The second one was more of an open world sort of thing, but it did implement some point and click style uh, things into it. Now, of course, when you're in these little areas, you're basically searching for clues, basically searching for items, but there's also an open segment where you are traversing through the ship, getting to different levels. And when you are in these open segments, that's where the horror really begins, in my opinion, because of the enemy that is on the ship. Now, the cool thing about the enemy on the ship is it's invisible. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, an invisible enemy how is that scary whatsoever well it's all based on sound and there's a tinging noise that goes on and if you're close to the enemy it gets louder and faster and it really builds up a lot of suspense because you can't see this enemy but you're trying to blast them with your little blaster that you have and it really makes for some awesome situations there's a lot of trial and error within the game unfortunately but I think that sort of adds to it because you always have this gloomy feeling that you're about to be attacked and you're about to die and if you haven't saved in a while well you're going to be screwed the game still looks pretty good. Unfortunately, it's definitely a bit expensive if you are picking up a retail copy of this game, as it has been going up in price over the years because people are finding out about this game. But Enemy Zero is definitely a really fun and unique survival horror game. There's a lot of suspense in it. The gloomy feeling of always being attacked by this invisible alien enemy is always there, and it always is really fun and really tense. And it's a game that I really enjoy. It's definitely worth checking out, and definitely a very fun horror game. A game that I feel is a bit overlooked in the horror genre because it's not really a traditional horror game is Condemned Criminal Origins. Now this was a game that I played when it first came out in the Xbox 360 and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. You play as a crime scene investigative unit guy who's looking for a serial killer named Serial Killer X. He's basically been killing people in condemned buildings and you're having to go to these different condemned buildings dealing with different people who seem to be normal but they may be under a bit of a trance and it all takes place in a first person perspective. There's some light puzzle elements in the game as well and I really like this game it's very dark and very brooding it doesn't really do too much in the world of jump scares but it's more of just tension a constant tension that is within this world of condemned the story a lot of people didn't really care for it but I think it's actually good it sort of is a bit slow at times but it definitely keeps you going as you're trying to find serial killer X because a lot of sort of supernatural things keep occurring it's a very gritty game but a very fun game if you like first-person style games you're really gonna enjoy this game there was also a sequel to this game that I really enjoyed as well. It had some really fun online multiplayer, but Condemned Criminal Origins, I feel, is the better of the two games in terms of single player stuff. Obviously, you can't play the multiplayer stuff anymore, and it's a super cheap game. So if you have a 360 or a PS3, it's definitely worth checking out Condemned Criminal Origins if you're looking for some light scares with some really interesting atmosphere. 
One thing that you don't see very often in the horror genre are co-op games. Most of them are single player experiences, games to be experienced by yourself. But the Obscure series sort of deviates from that and allows you to be a multiplayer local co-op experience. Now the first Obscure came out on the PS2 and the Xbox. Obscure 2, the Aftermath came out on the PS2, Nintendo Wii, and PSP. I like Obscure 2 a little bit more than Obscure 1, but basically they're the same sort of style of games. In Obscure 1, you play as high school students who have something going on within their high school, an evil presence, and you have to figure out what's going on. In Obscure 2, it follows most of those kids as they go to college. I like Obscure 2, though, because I feel like there's more environments to check out, and there's different sort of elements in this game that have you doing different things. You know, you're not just sort of stuck in the high school like you are in the most of Ex Obscure 1. In Obscure 2, there's some different deviations in terms of environments and things like that. The ending of the game is really fun as well in Obscure 2, but I really like the Obscure series. These were sort of budget titles. They both released at $30 brand new. But if you're looking for something to play with a friend, a local co-op experience in a survival horror game, it's really fun. The story writing is very sort of late 90s, early 2000s horror movie stuff, sort of like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer. It's very cliche, but I feel like it sort of plays into the game and sort of helps set the atmosphere of this game. Whether it's Obscure or Obscure 2, they're definitely games worth checking out. Really fun games and really th I think they're games that you'll enjoy. When it comes to horror games, a series that's pretty much synonymous with the genre is of course Silent Hill. The original Silent Hill was just an absolutely groundbreaking game in terms of storytelling and really atmospheric stuff. The first three Silent Hills are very well revered. I also like Silent Hill for the Room. I thought it was a really good game. But the Silent Hill series is very popular. But a Silent Hill game that you may have never played that I really enjoyed was Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Now it's very different from all other Silent Hill games as this is more of a psychological horror game. There's no combat in it. And Silent Silent Hill obviously was known for a lot of combat and enemies and things like this, but in Silent Hill Shattered Memories, it's all psychological stuff. You run away from your enemies. And what's really cool about this game is the sort of scenes that you have with the psychiatrist. Because basically a psychiatrist talks to you and you answer his questions. And the way you answer his questions pretty much mold the world that you are about to go into and the experiences that you're about to have. So if you answer the questions differently, if you don't answer them truthfully, they will change the world as you go throughout the game and it's really interesting. It really leads to a lot of deviations and multiple playthroughs in the game. It's definitely more of a puzzle style game and it's definitely, you know, not a survival horror game in the true sense of where there's combat and stuff like that, but the psychological horror really starts to play into you and it's a really fun experience. Definitely very unique when it comes to the horror genre and definitely a criminally underrated game in my opinion. This game released on the PS2, the Nintendo Wii, and the PSP. I highly suggest you check it out if you're looking for something a bit different in the horror genre because it's a really great game. Another game that sort of is a first person shooter horror experience that is absolutely timeless in my opinion is Fear. I absolutely love Fear. I remember playing this game on the Xbox 360 and I was immediately sucked in. It's sort of a futuristic thing going on but there's a little creepy girl and you're trying to find out why this little creepy girl exists, what she is doing, what sort of psychokinetic powers she has and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. It really makes for a unique horror experience because it's this type of horror game where when you start playing it, it starts to feel like a first person shooter and you're going through these environments, doing these things, blasting through enemies and you almost sort of forget that this is at its core a horror game and then something will come along and something will terrify you and then it sort of brings you back to reality. It's a really fun game. The story in it is pretty good and it got a bunch of sequels as well. There was Fear 2 and Fear 3. They weren't quite as well received as the original Fear and I could sort of see why. I felt like the story kind of got off the rails in the subsequent games but the original Fear is a fantastic experience. If you like first person shooters and you like horror games, this is a match made in heaven for you. It's really tight, really fun, it has slow motion mechanics as well. The online was super fun back in the day and it's definitely a game worth checking out. One of my favorite horror games of all time is Dino Crisis. Now this game released on the PS1 and the Dreamcast and I definitely recommend checking out the Dreamcast version of the game if possible because the graphics are a bit better and I feel the controls are a little bit better. But Dino Crisis when it released was pretty much considered to be Resident Evil with dinosaurs. So a lot of people didn't really think it was all going to be all that scary. But I think the inclusion of dinosaurs actually made Dino Crisis a scarier game than the original Resident Evil because these raptors and tyrannosaurs and things like that were 
much more intelligent and much faster than they were the zombies until we got Crimson Heads in Resident Evil Remake. So it really made for an interesting experience. It really just plays out like a Resident Evil style game. You are dropped into a base and you find out that this base is overran with dinosaurs and the dinosaurs are trying to kill everyone. And you have to pretty much rid them of the dinosaurs. So it's kind of a cliche story, definitely that early Capcom sort of stuff, but I really enjoyed this game. There was a sequel to it as well, Dino Crisis 2, that was definitely more of an action game. Dino Crisis 3 was just outer space and a bunch of crap, but the original Dino Crisis is a fantastic game. It really sets a great pace and a great mood. If you're a fan of original Resident Evil style games, you like those sort of puzzles and things like that, and you want some more intricate enemies that are a bit quicker, a bit smarter, and a bit faster, Dino Crisis is definitely going to scratch that itch. A lot of people seem to like this game, but I think more people need to love this game because it's absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we see a remaster of Dino Crisis one day because I think it's a series that would do really well. You know, a lot of people don't consider the original Jurassic Park to be a horror film, but there's definitely horror elements in that. The original Tyrannosaurus scene, that's sort of a horror film. The kitchen scene with the raptors, that's sort of a horror film. And I feel that's what Dino Crisis really encompasses, this sort of fear of dinosaurs and dinosaurs being the unknown. It's a really fantastic game. Definitely check it out if you haven't before. Well, the next game I want to talk about definitely isn't necessarily a scary game. It's definitely a horror game in that it's very bloody, very violent, and very fun. And that is the original House of the Dead. I absolutely love this game. I remember whenever I would go to the mall when I was a kid and I would get to play House of the Dead, I was absolutely enthralled by it. It's a light gun shooter with zombies. What wouldn't you like about it? It's very fast paced. It's very 90s Sega. And of course, it saw some home ports. The original House of the Dead came to the Sega Saturn and it's a bit of a neutered version of the game. The graphics are definitely a pretty low quality, but I think it's still a very fun game. The gameplay is definitely still there and they retained all the elements from the game that made it so special in my opinion. If you plan on picking up the original House of the Dead, definitely pick up the Japanese version as it is much cheaper than the American version. Of course, there were subsequent games. You had House of the Dead 2 and 3. You also had House of the Dead Overkill. If you are looking for a House of the Dead game, really, you can't go wrong with any of them. They all have the same sort of cheesy voice acting. They all have the sort of same cheesy 90s Sega feel to them, but they're all fantastic games. If you enjoy blasting through zombies, House of the Dead is definitely a game that you need to check out. Much like the original Jurassic Park, another film series that can sort of be tied in into horror stuff is the Alien series. I definitely feel that there are tons of horror elements within those series, and Alien Isolation really sort of encompasses that horror element, as this is a stealth survival horror game in which you are put onto a ship and you have to survive the aliens. But unlike most Alien games that have come out over the years that have a lot of gunfire and, you know, big weapons and things like that, this is a game that you have very limited resources. So the best course of action is just to avoid the alien itself. And the aliens that are in this game are absolutely terrifying. They look so realistic and their movement patterns are very cryptic. So you don't quite know where they are going to end up. You don't quite know where they are going to go. And the game looks absolutely gorgeous as well as this is the most modern game on this list. Alien Isolation is definitely a unique game on this list, but I feel like it helps stand out by not having a lot of combat, by focusing more on the horror of the alien itself, the elements of the alien itself, and just trying to stay alive. A fantastic game, it's commonly on sale all the time, so I definitely highly suggest you check out Alien Isolation. Another game that relies on stealth more so than firepower is the Outlast series. Now, of course, we have Outlast and Outlast 2, and these were games that I dabbled in, but I never really played them much until they came to the Nintendo Switch because I wanted to review these games, and I absolutely fell in love with this franchise. Like, Outlast is now one of my favorite horror games and horror franchises, like, ever. They are such good games. The first Outlast takes place in an abandoned insane asylum that's not really abandoned that you quickly learn, and there's all sorts of weird stuff you play as a detective. The second the second one though, I feel is a bit of a better game, and I know that's a bit of a controversial statement, but I feel like the open environments that the second game offers are much more pleasing to me. There's a lot more variety in terms of where you go and environments you see. You spend most of the first game in the insane asylum, whereas in the second game there's a lot different areas that you go through. There's open areas, there's churches, there's villages and things like that, and it's a game based on stealth. You're basically recording everything that's going on in these areas, trying to solve a mystery of what is happening. In Outlast 2, basically, a woman is brutally murdered, and you are going to check out the crime scene with your girlfriend, and then something happens, and then all of a sudden, you are pretty much within the world of Outlast. It's a very scary game, a very tense game, and a very well-written game as well. I really enjoy the story in both of the Outlast games, and it's just a fantastic franchise. I know 
a lot of people probably just sort of assimilate this with a popular survival horror franchise, so they sort of skip over it, but it's definitely not worth skipping over. You definitely need to check out these games, whether you check them out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, or Switch, they're awesome games and really enjoyable. And the final game I want to talk about is the granddaddy of them all when it comes to horror games, at least in my opinion, and that is Resident Evil. Yes, there was Alone in the Dark. Yes, there was other games that came out before Resident Evil, but I feel like Resident Evil really encompassed survival horror. It created survival horror. You, of course, go to an abandoned mansion that is quickly not abandoned, trying to find out things that have been going on in there, and trying to rescue some team members that have gone in there. You play as one of two characters, and the game just absolutely kicks ass. It was the first time you saw things like jump scares and these huge creatures and zombies and blood and all sorts of fun stuff. If you've never played the original Resident Evil, I have to kind of question your gamer card here because the original Resident Evil is just such an amazing experience. There's a ton of different ways to play it. There, of course, is the original uh, Resident Evil that came out on the PlayStation 1, the Sega Saturn, and there was even a Nintendo DS version of the game. Then you had the Resident Evil remake that came out on the GameCube that has been released on other systems. You need to play Resident Evil. If you only play one game on this list, play Resident Evil. Get your history up and learn about one of the best and the granddaddy of the survival horror genre. All right, and so those are some of my favorite horror games of all time. Let me know in the comments section down below what horror games you enjoy. And I know what you're saying, RGT, where is Clock Tower on your list? I've never really gotten into the Clock Tower series, but it's something I do want to explore in the future because I feel like I'm sort of missing out. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.